Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome. I'm Amanda, the Dean of GSAP. I'm very excited to uh, be speaking with Emmanuel Admasu today, who will be who has just joined the faculty uh, at GSAP in architecture and urban design. And we're so, so excited um, to have him. Emmanuel is not only uh, known for um, his partnership, ADWO, with Jen Wood and the amazing work that they do as a practice, but also um, known as a, as a thinker, as a scholar, um, and a researcher who's really really dealing uh, with um, issues of representation that bring together design theory, contemporary uh, ideas about contemporary African art, uh, kind of questioning ideas that we have about um, cities, the global south, uh, and, 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 and much more uh, at the intersection of um, race in the built environment and and so uh, and a very very talented architect uh, as well and an alum uh, of, of GSAP and Jen is as well so welcome Emmanuel um, I wanted to focus the first question uh, really on um, on your on you know starting with your drawings and this question of representation and and you know many uh, uh, in, in your case I, I, I really feel like um, your drawings have been a tool to question uh, issues of representation in the discipline and kind of change perspectives and kind of adopt a very different points of views to recast, you know, some of the story histories we tell ourselves about architecture. And so I wanted to start there. They are so, they are both um, exquisite and, and architectural, but also very, very um, different. Um, I feel like they are always populated with people and you know they're, they're sort of telling their own stories about what we should be looking for when we think about um, architecture and, 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 and cities. Yeah I mean it's it's a tough one to start with mostly because I think that's something we're constantly asking ourselves uh, what the drawings are trying to do and I think um, both in the research and the design work uh, we're really interested in the ways in which conventional architectural representation fails to represent cities like Addis Ababa and spaces like Mercato and Carico. So I think, you know, first of all, the practice, as you mentioned, is in partnership with Jen Wood. So we're both bringing different interests and sensibilities to the table. And we usually approach things from opposite sides of the spectrum and produce something out of this uh, juxtaposition. Um, so this interest in frustrating the limits and failures of architectural representation happened uh, in one of the, the earliest exhibitions that we participated in in 2015 uh, where we decided to collaborate with uh, mixed media artist Ezra Wube uh, to produce a stop motion animation uh, of the history of Mercato and this was an exciting process because we uh, were basically sending him plans sections and accents and he was redrawing them and animating them based on his own interests of uh, collapsing multiple perspectives and time frames. And I think that initial experience of finding ways to um, draw time and space was a formative experience for our practice. And this uh, led to an interest, an interest in really uh, challenging uh, Western constructions of linear time as well. So we started producing what we call uh, timescapes, which are really trying to collapse multiple time frames. Uh, to understand the past, present, and possible future uh, simultaneously. And uh, this interest in fluid conceptions of time and space uh, to uh, a large extent kind of led to um, a tapestry piece that we produced for Mpo Matsipa's uh, African Mobilities Exhibition. Uh, and it was also exciting to work with the museum and the production of that tapestry piece where we were beginning to understand the limits of translation as uh, our line works needed to be translated into threads. Uh, so we, we later found out that the tapestry was actually fabricated in Egypt. So mm -hmm. it traveled across three different uh, continents. Um, uh, and moving even closer, our most recent exhibition to markets, we uh, were investigating Kariko and Dar es Salaam and Mercato and Addis Ababa. So uh, we were really interested in testing um, uh, multiple representational strategies that were in conversation uh, with the work being produced by uh, 
artists in those cities, mostly painters and photographers. And what we quickly realized is that these artists were uh, producing immersive images uh, that were kind of juxtaposing bodies uh, with fragments of space and objects. Uh, so our drawings were really started by representing the immersive context that the buildings uh, were situated in uh, first and then kind of adding the building as a participant uh, within that uh, choreography. Um, so we also wanted to avoid the cliche of uh, architectural representations dealing with the African context that usually are um, in, in one of two categories, which is kind of the aerial photograph of corrugated uh, metal roofs or a kind of incredibly dense uh, line work, kind of a network diagram, which usually demonstrates the labor of production uh, than a particular concept or ambiance of the space. Uh, so uh, we established an initial constraint of really producing drawings uh, without lines. So in essence, the drawings were color blocks that can be screen printed. And uh, this made it relatively easy to um, basically produce the final objects uh, for the exhibition, which were uh, large scale drawings printed directly on metal uh, with a polished corrugated backing. And uh, they were suspended in the middle of the gallery and we kind of challenged um, uh, participants to walk backwards in the exhibition with us to simulate uh, the intensity of the marketplace. Um, so I don't know if that answered your question, but but I think it's an ongoing uh, exploration where we're testing one uh, as a performance, like what does the drawing do and uh, how does it begin to engage with aspects of these cities that are typically erased or removed from the architectural drawing. No, it's, it's, it's amazing to hear you go into such detail in terms of the questions at every step, you know, should, should this drawing have lines and mm -hmm. what, when, and, and what do lines mean or, or how have lines or excess of lines uh, been used to um, sort of reduce, uh, you know, present certain ideas about exactly. these and as a network, uh, you know, without without form or without, right? Or, um, uh, or as you said, the aerial, right? Which mm -hmm. is like such a, such a, it's true, a love affair of the distance and the sort of godlike view uh, of, uh, of a context uh, that one, I, I remember uh, when Ram has did his Harvard project on the city and was focusing on, on Lagos, you know, one of the big criticism was that he visited most of the, uh, that was the rumor. I don't know how much it was true, but he really visited through helicopter. Mm -hmm. and had you know these aerials and and kind of never coming down under the under these infrastructures that were being described. So just a you know for our students, you know, just a thought process of questioning where does a drawing sit? How does it sit? What you know? Um, and and so I wanted to um, and this notion of time and space and as it ties to you know one of the um, the sort of very reductive notions um, that architects have still um, today about um, African cities, the global South in, in general is the sense of informality, right? That there's mm -hmm. a lack of, lack of structure and it's just about people moving, moving and networks and, you know, and, and I know that for urban design in particular and the program that like you're coming in with fundamentally questioning these notions of informality or, you know, you don't, rem you, you're you trying to capture the life. That's what I'm hearing. You're starting with the life of, of, of people in those places, but, um, but you're not kind of stepping outside of it. You're then nevertheless inserting buildings and, and structure and kind of a built form. I mean, your, your work still is very interested in issues of typology and the, mm -hmm. typology of the market. And so it's not a, I just wanted to, push a little bit on your pushing of these notions of informality as they often move us entirely away from the built and the typological and in your case to say no I'm holding both both things together you can have yeah. informal setting but but you actually have very clear structures very clear typologies the market is one that you know is an incredible lens through which to um, get out of these binaries or or that's how I'm reading your um, interest in the market. 
Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's that's definitely correct. But I also usually answer that question with a question, um, yeah. <laughs> which is, you know, these spaces are informal in comparison to whose formal city. And I think that dichotomy of the formal versus informal tends to assume uh, that somehow there is a certain idea of a formal, uh, typically European city that these African cities are moving towards. And I think, you know, we usually start off by imagining that maybe they're moving in a completely different direction. And I think that assumption of, uh, you know, the formal versus informal uh, is deeply flawed also because to a certain extent, it's an extension of a colonial value system, which tends to measure everything in comparison to Europe. And I think it is very much uh, for us, like it's much more exciting um, to understand these spaces as environments that contain multiple degrees of formality. Uh, and most of these systems of relating to one another and spatial practices tend to be overlooked or dismissed as informal because we have not been trained to see them, uh, let alone appreciate them. Uh, so our ambition is to really learn how to engage um, these cities and environments in their own terms. And this requires us to undo the centrality and the autonomy of the building as a static object that imposes its will on the city. So instead, we're really interested in the ways in which the city, and by that I mean, uh, you know, different forms of spatial occupation introduced by non-architects, impose themselves on the building, uh, on the sidewalk, and on the street. So uh, I think this spatial continuum uh, does not stop at the property line. It goes well beyond the limits of the city block. And I think this is extremely important to developing new approaches to urban design because um, recently I've also been interested in other forms of relating to one another in the city that go beyond the limits of property. Uh, and the marketplaces we have been looking at have robust kind of social spatial compositions uh, and ways of relating to people that are not trapped uh, by the regime of property. Uh, in essence, the fact that um, they were produced in response to uh, different uh, oppressive regimes makes them extremely agile. Uh, and you can even go a bit further by saying that uh, the only thing formal about these sites is the imposition of the regime of property uh, that is committed to a certain idea of exclusion or borderization. And this always fails uh, in environments like Mercato because almost every shopkeeper has a network of street hawkers that are moving through the city, distributing the goods and the merchandise. Um, so almost every room kind of has, you know, a, a series of vectors moving in and out of it uh, that are always tethered to, to that in, interior environment. Um, so there are different forms of mutual aid as well that are protecting these merchants and residents from multiple forms of uh, surveillance and displacement. And we're interested in kind of valuing uh, and to a certain extent, even protecting these networks of mutual aid uh, because they also give us strategies to defend other cities, you know, cities like Providence or, or New York from uh, the um, homogenizing forces of real estate speculation. And so that, that brings me to two, two, two points. I, I, I really appreciate the I mean, your practice is between Melbourne and, and Addis Ababa and, and you know, you, um, you are also now making those bridges between uh, places and as you mentioned, and, and so my, my two questions are kind of related is one, the, um, the importance of collaboration and your collaborators. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the things I really appreciated um, when we spoke, uh, few months ago was your um, insistence that your collaborators and the community and audience you were engaging with in this research were very much architects, you know, I sort of uh, yeah. um, right that there's a real, you have a really a clear position as to who's going to, who are you going to partner with to, to, to be part of um, that place you're, um, you're kind of representing in different ways and or acting within. Um, and then, and then, kind of bringing that question to here, and the collaboration now you have with the um, Black Reconstruction Collective, and the upcoming show at MoMA, and this, uh, you know, amazing kind of grouping of thinking and practices coming together 
um, um, in this in this moment uh, to uh, a form of mutual uh, <laughs> support as well as architects um, uh, to transform um, the field in urgent ways at this moment. Yeah, and you know, I think it's also somewhat, <laughs> it's fair to say that, uh, you know, participatory practices in architecture often tend to be rather uh, performative. Uh, it ends up being an opportunity for a kind of a photo op with community members pointing at boards and images to uh, legitimize a series of uh, foregone conclusions. So in our case, most of our design and research work has been uh, focusing on spaces in East Africa or, or the Horn of Africa. So very early on, we were able to understand the challenges of um, building and doing research on complex and, you know, ever shifting spaces from afar. Um, therefore, we knew it was uh, much more interesting uh, to develop long term relationships with architects and researchers in those cities. So instead of a uh, you know, an extractive practice it became a long conversation between architects, artists, and academics positioned in multiple cities. And um, I would say that this has been extremely generative for our practice, and it allows us to continue learning from the shifts that are happening in these cities in real time. Um, and I also think removing the hierarchy and establishing a form of collective intelligence across uh, multiple geographies is really the ultimate ambition of our practice. And these engagements and collaborations with uh, architects in Addis Ababa and Dar es Salaam are also redefining the way we approach uh, projects here, you know, in, in Providence, in New York City. And it's much more liberating to think of the practice as a platform to talk to people uh, and discuss ideas across time and space. Uh, sometimes what gets generated from those conversations is a building, and sometimes it's an exhibition, um, a book, or an art installation. Uh, and I also want to say that uh, part of why I'm interested in these expansive forms of practice is because we're engaged in uh, different forms of building and unbuilding. Uh, in other words, the unbuilding might be about radically reinterpreting the histories of these sites. Um, and um, I think that work might remain in the realm of knowledge production while uh, the building practice requires radical imaginations of, uh, you know, a better future, a different type of world or, you know, an anticipation of certain ideas of spatial justice, whatever that might mean in different uh, contexts. Well, Emmanuel, we're so um, excited to welcome you for, you know, collaborations at GSAP. Uh, <laughs> students and the faculty and um, just kind of bringing your incredible uh, breadth of perspective but also depth of thinking uh, about you know what it means to practice architecture today and how we can think about it in a different way for the future and I know you've already you're already inspiring so many of our students and uh, uh, our you know everyone holds you in great admiration so I can't tell you how excited we are to welcome you uh, with, uh, you know, your first um, official involvement in the summer. Uh, and um, hopefully at that moment, we will, we will be together um, and, uh, and kind of um, build on this distance that is yep. <laughs> uh, to, to learn how to, how to engage, uh, uh, continue to engage different geographies and cultures uh, in new ways. So thank you so much, Emmanuel. It's been a- Thank you, Amal. And, uh, and see you soon, stay, stay well. You too, take care. Thanks. <laughs>